Well, good morning, everyone. It's Monday morning, and as you can see, we have a special guest, Donna Stanfield, right? Yes. <laughs> Donna's been on a week, a couple weeks ago, and we ne we never got finished, Donna. I know. <laughs> and I, I'm totally looking forward to today, but today is Monday. And folks, I know that uh, you saw some of the shows last week, and last week was the election. Some of us are still probably hurting a little bit, and some are excited. All that aside, that was an important event in this point in history. But what Donna is going to talk about today, my heart is more into this, because that was, the election is for a moment in time. Donna is going to talk to us today about eternity and how God has worked in her life. And I pray that he works in yours also. So let's just start with this, Donna. What's your verse or verses for today? Actually, Pastor, yeah. I, had another, I had another verse picked out. And the word I, I had picked out another. But God picked out this verse. Okay, um, well, I'm good with that. <laughs> so let me share it with you. It's Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Um, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. I love those verses, always I have. But how did that come into play in your life? I'm celebrating 50 years of being a Christ follower. And you know, some of our viewers might not quite understand what that means. And for me, for me, it means that um, I now know that 50 years ago, I, be, I decided to follow Jesus. And I know that because I had to rack my brain. I know I'm old, but I had to think back 50 years ago why I know that to be true. So well, that I was-, was That was 1970. Yeah. <laughs> I know that as a fact, because that's the year I started following Jesus. So my husband and I moved to Palm Springs, California, after we'd been married about four years, in the summer of 69. Okay. And um, I, I always felt like I was a Christian, okay? I loved God. God loved me. I knew that. I loved going to church with my grandparents, getting all dressed up. I loved to sing. And I loved to sit in that pew and I just loved singing and picking up that hymnal. In fact, I think that's when I started harmonizing, even as a young child. So those were special times. I was a spoiled little grandchild, okay? But they, I loved those church experiences. And I knew about Jesus in the manger when he was born at, you know, at Christmas. And I knew what the cross, the empty cross meant, that, that, that he had actually risen from the dead. And uh, I didn't understand that part too much, but I, I did understand what Easter was all about. It wasn't just the Easter bunny. And um, something must have happened. That <laughs> said, I've got to get more serious with the Lord. That's right. Except I didn't get so serious because here I was standing in front of that church with my parents and my grandparents watching me in a white dress my mom had made me. And they put a white Bible in my hand and they had sent me to classes and I'd learned from a catechism that I needed to repeat these things in front of the church so I could take First Communion. Okay. And I did, the, I did all those things. I don't remember opening that little white Bible. And then I became a teenager. I don't remember reaching out to God through my teenage years or opening that Bible. I do remember graduating, going to college, meeting my future husband, who was a Christian man who even told me that he had been born again, which I did not understand. I didn't know what that term meant, but that's what he said. And I thought, great, you know, and I loved him. So we got married. When we went to Palm Spring in the summer of 69, Christine was two and Carol was one. And so they were toddlers. And I remember God always had us in a situation where we were paying attention to him. And I didn't understand that because up until then, we didn't even have Sundays off. 
But when we got there, my husband got a job where he had the weekends off and we decided we wanted to go to church. So God was already speaking to me through those little girls because I thought, well, they need to know about God. So God often uses our children to bring us back to, to him. I love that he put that in your heart that they needed to go to church. Then what happened? So we found a church, but it wasn't a big church building. It was a little girl scout house because they didn't have a building. And, and, and they, this pastor and his wife and their daughter and their son, son-in-law were the only people in this building. And we That's walked cool. in and they took care of my little girls while I sang songs with their daughter playing the piano and this pastor preaching from God's word, from, from this Bible. And he didn't seem to have notes. It was all coming from his heart. Well, we went back the next time. It was not at the Girl Scout. It was at the Bank of America building. And that was a new church. We kept trying to find them. And then finally, we went after Christmas, which you know I love Christmas with that baby Jesus. I walked into that church and I thought that the pastor was going to be preaching about the baby in the manger. But instead, he was preaching, it was the Sunday after Christmas, he was preaching about Christ on the cross. And I, I walked in and I loved, they had had it all decorated. And this, this, it was like a senior center, community center, but there was an aisle and the lights were kind of dim because we went in the evening. And, and I remember God speaking to me at the very moment through that pastor and that sermon, that was the sermon, that was the little talk that he wanted to share with me. Right that minute about this scripture that I just read to you. What did you say to your father? Well, he said, is there anybody in this room that has never given their heart to Jesus and asked him to come into their heart? Just raise your hand. Well, I did. It was the most, and then I don't remember if he said, come down. I just stood up and walked down that aisle. And when I got there, he said, and he already knew me. He'd been in our home. He'd already asked me if I knew Jesus. And I said, well, I'm a Christian. But I could never tell him when I became that Christian. That was a life not only a life-changing moment for you, but an eternity-changing moment for you. Those watching right now, it's not a big, huge, uh, you don't have to do anything. Other, Donna just raised her hand to acknowledge yes. that she wanted to follow Jesus. So in the, as we close today, Donna, I want you to, to read that verse, those verses again. And folks, okay. listen carefully to these. And if you would want to believe and do follow these, just raise your hand. There's not even anyone else in your house right now, probably. <laughs> right. Raise your hand. Go ahead, Donna. So Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and you are saved. Beautiful. And if you want to do that as you're watching, just tell someone else you can raise your hand right now, but write me, tell me, we will send you free information. If you just drop me a note, or call our church office. Either way, we want to help you with a walk with the Lord, and it will change your life just like it did for Donna. Thank you, Donna, for Thank sharing you. what God did in your life. God bless. Have a great day. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye, Donna. Bye. Bye. Beautiful day. It's wonderful. This is the day.